Hey everybody, and welcome to another Rim Guide. I'm your host, Nubit, and today we will be talking about base design and efficiency. Now, there will always be other ways to do things, but if you're not sure, this guide is an excellent start for whatever you are trying to do. Starting out. Kitchens and Fridges Part 1 Kitchens are an essential part of each colony unless you prefer nutrient paste, of course. But that's not what we are here for, are we? It's time to build a kitchen that will stand the test of many colonists and mouths to feed. A kitchen that serves quality food, stays clean, and works fast. So listen up, because it's building time. To start with the kitchen, you want to find a space with enough room for the kitchen and fridge on the side of the base closest to the farms. This will reduce walk time during harvest, and having the kitchen by the fridge is pretty self-explanatory. The kitchen should be just big enough to hold the electric stove, with only one door in to stop people filthing the room passing through it all the time. Next, you want to place two single shelves on either side of your stove and filter the ingredients to make sure there is always two types at the stove. Fine meals, anybody? And finally, you want to sterile tile the room to remove any risk of food poisoning. The door to the kitchen should lead right to the fridge where the haulers can bring ingredients in and out. Also, they will haul out any cooked meals if you set the cook station to drop completed meals on the floor. The less time the chef spends walking, the more they will cook. Keep that in mind. Next for the freezer, you're going to want to use tightly placed shelves to maximize storage space in here. You can also add a nutrient dispenser if you like. I prefer not to here. There should be straight pass from the farms into the freezer and another door leading to the dining room so palms can grab a snack quickly while hungry. Remember, palms will only walk 25 tiles to find a table to eat at, so you want to keep your dining room close to the freezer. Now, onto the dining room. Dining rooms are an essential part of room work. What would we do if we had to eat without tables? Make food you walk with? Palms haven't invented the walking taco yet, so we would all starve and die. That said, there is a litany of mood buffs that can be gained from the dining room, starting with having a TV at the dining table, adding statues and games to play. If you can combine the rec room and dining room and make it beautiful, you will get a consistent awesome mood buff to all your colonists all the time. Combining that with great food, and you will be hard pressed to find someone near a mental break. Now, if you don't like making individual bedrooms, you can line the walls of this room with individual beds, and all your pawns should be plenty happy with it, granting the great barracks buff. However, we can always build individual rooms. Individual bedrooms are pretty simple. Get a 12 tile room, throw in an excellent statue with an excellent bed, and you are good to go, especially with some carpet. If your artists and builders are not so talented, a few plant pots and carpet will go a long way to make your pawns day. There is also the option of adding some fancy chairs to the room as well. If you don't want to tend the plant pots, just make sure the space doesn't get too cramped or they will be unhappy regardless of what are not as fancy as other rooms in Rimworld. However, you can make a solid effort. Next to each workstation, place a single shelf and filter it for ingredients for anything you would like to mass produce with to reduce the walk time of any pawn. And to ensure they don't stop working, place a cloth chair at each workstation and be sure to build some statues around to keep everyone happy and comfortable. That said, there are certain buildings that need their own specialized spaces to avoid making a mess, namely the stonecutter's table and the smelting table. Both of these items require resources that will not deteriorate outside, and produce resources that will also not deteriorate, you guessed it, outside. It's best to build small six tile rooms with cloth chairs against the outside of your base to house these workstations and build stockpiles outside to hold stone blocks or slag chunks you wish to process. And when complete, the steel and bricks can be placed outside as well to conserve space. That said, it's best to keep a few shelves dedicated to steel inside your main workshop to reduce walk time. At this point, you probably have a lot of rooms in your colony with plenty of hallways. So before we go any further, it's best we discuss the best way to go about hallways. Hallways should always be more than one tile wide. This way, in the event of a raid, more than one pawn can get after an attacker at a time. The corners of rooms have no need to be walled either. This is a great way to add the occasional statue or item shelf or heater along the path in your colony. 
maybe even some plant pots. Skull spikes, if you have slaves, there's plenty of options for this underutilized space. What did I say, slaves? Let's get on to the next part of this script. The free waiver part. Every now and then you're going to come across pawns that are unwavering pawns in your colony that can't be recruited. It's best they be put to work or harvested for parts and chopped down as needed. The best way to get free waiver is to build a contained space kind of like a penal colony. A walled box that has a nutrient paste dispenser attached and a place to dine and do recreation as well as bedrooms. But with with no real exits, the only one leading to a small kill box with a door system that allows your pawns to get in. Create a zone that ensures that none of the enslaved pawns will leave the space and you're solid. Use them for whatever labor you like. A great use for these pawns is deep drills and stone cutting, since they do not need to leave to get any of the resources they're using. And if any bugs pop out of the ground, they are just free food for their nutrient paste dispenser. They also can be made to melt down slag chunks, which is very efficient, but someone will need to haul in the slag or you risk an escape. Eventually, some Someone is going to need to go in the rip scanner, so it's best not to lose anyone. Now next up on our list of slightly better accommodations, prisons. Prisons should be very pretty, nice places to house everyone you could want to recruit. Think of it as a welcoming center. We are here to convince any raider beyond a reasonable doubt that your home is awesome and there sucks, so they should stay. Statues, carpets, plant pots, good food, and games goes a long way to recruiting prisoners faster. And if you're certain they won't mental break and try to kill you, you can speed this process up by having a small prison set up inside of your research room. Your researcher will talk to the prisoner while they work, helping to build a relationship faster, thusly recruiting the pawn faster. Next up is the research room. We all know these rooms need to be clean, but how many of you build mech stuff in here? Well, I do too, but neither of us should. This room doesn't need all the most expensive stuff in it, and it definitely doesn't need dirty mechs crawling around everywhere. It always seems to be the place raiders drop in as well, but maybe that's just me. Anyways, all your doodads and doohickeys go in here. Stereotype that floor, and at least promise to keep two researchers before you have high adventures, and you should be solid. Moving. Ah, the hospital is a vital part of any colony and should be placed near the frontmost entrance of the base so that any wounded pawns or raiders you capture, downed travelers, traders, you name it, anyone you think needs medical attention can get quick and immediate access to a doctor. The hospital room should be large, very large. In fact, 90 tiles inside. This isn't an exact number, but make it big. The idea is to put all hospital beds near the door and have no other exits to the hospital. If you can't afford to sterile the hospital, this will ensure it never gets dirty. Get eight beds hooked up to a vitals monitor near the door as well as assorted medicine and you should be good. At the moment, there is now no low power way to efficiently store heal root near the hospital, so I recommend a single floor tile stockpile to hold heal medicine and set it to critical to ensure not too much is out of the fridge at one time. And on a final note, for hospital Ensure you have two doctors, one for day shift and one for night shift. This way you will never be late on a vital tent. Also, maybe add some statues and a TV so the room beauty and recreation can counteract those giant pain debuffs. You're welcome in advance. It's time to talk about zones and why you need to use them more. I bet you have some wimps in the county that are really good at crafting. Why let them wander off into danger when they have those tasty skills? Create a nice park in your base for pawns to get that nice outdoors buff. If they can't leave, then zone them to be permanently indoors. Even better, zone them to only be able to go to work to eat bed and have fun with nowhere else available. This will make for a highly effective crafter. Do the same for your chef and even some haulers. You can set up hauling paths for different hauler groups to effectively supply an ultra base. It's time to talk about walls. Not kill boxes, just the walls. I bet you build them. I bet you've double layered them. I'm here to tell you when you want to build double layered walls, it's best to build a hallway that wraps around the entire base with some sides having doors in or out. Building walls this way allows you to safely move pawns around the colony during a breach. And having the inner door gives you the ability to take pot shots at the enemy, easily allowing you to move along the walls. To improve this, you can stagger the walls, allowing you to fire back at anyone that gets inside the walls with you, shooting around the 
edges at. I find this to be necessary in the late game when very large drop pod raids start happening, but not so important during the early to mid game. It's time to talk about hazardous item storage. Let's start out with mortars. I like to build one tile rooms with single shelves in them out on their own near the mortars to store any shells we have. Any anti-grain gets two walls of marble and two doors of marble. I found this contains the explosion at the cost of the first layer of wall. And to prevent any stupid pawns from smacking them, I like to place a wood wall in front of the door and tear it down when I'm ready to use the shells. I do not run any power lines under the room to avoid any damage, and this is really all you can do. Next up is chem fuel. Now it's important to note that chem fuel explosions get larger based on stack size, so it's important to understand how to store this material to avoid losing your whole entire stash. This method can also be used for the anti-grain shells and other mortars if you like. It's best to store chem fuel in a compartmentalized room similar to the mortars, make a hallway with one tile marble rooms or other strong stone, and place a shelf directly behind each door, filtering them all for chem fuel. If one of the sets of chem fuel explodes, it won't explode all of the chem fuel, and the chem fuel that does explode will be contained. Luciferium should be stored in a one tile room that has no door and simply remove the wall when you want to use a dose. And lastly, Toxway should be kept in a freezer in its own box on the edge of the map that itself powered right? Like powered on its own until you have pods to ship that waste away <laughs> or equipment to destroy it cleanly. I thank you all for watching this video and if you think we missed anything or have your own tips, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I'd like to thank all the patrons that make videos like this possible. We couldn't do it without you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video.